Now, it's fair to say that uh, we live much of our lives online. Between social media sites and online banking, we voluntarily disclose practically every single morsel of personal information to anyone and everyone who's interested. And it's those faceless anyones that we really should be wary of. Investigative reporter and author of the Sunday Times top 10 bestseller, Mac Mafia, Misha Glennie is back with more insights into the world of cybercrime. We caught up with him at the IT Web Security Summit in Johannesburg, to talk about uh, his latest book, it's called Dark Market, How Hackers Became the New Mafia. Misha Glennie, you talk about cyber warfare being a new and baffling environment. I think we know that, but in what sense? Well, it's just that there is so much going on that there is incredible technological innovation that if you are not well-schooled and well-educated in cyber, in technology, in cybersecurity, in advanced hacking techniques and things like that, it is very hard to know what on earth is going on. And that's because you see, essentially, I break it down to try and make it comprehensible, three areas. You have cyber crime, cyber industrial espionage, and then at the far end, cyber conventional political espionage and cyber warfare. If these things were three separate areas that we could divide up and study individually, it would be fine. But you find criminals involved in espionage, you find security services uh, watching what's going on in criminal activities, and it's basically a sort of digital cacophony going on there. So uh, we don't really know what's happening. Now, is this a, a Harry Potter versus Lord Voldemort kind of format? You talk about security versus the desire for freedom. That's a very big concept. No question about it. I mean, the Internet started off with this fantastic vision of breaking down barriers, of being a democratizing technology. And, of course, what we've seen over the past 15 years or so is, is yes, it has done these fantastic things with social media networks, political mobilization, the like of which we've never seen before across borders and so on. As governments and as other actors, criminals, terrorists, have seen this evolve, they've also realized that like any technology, it can be used for bad as well as good. And they have moved into the game big time. And there are aspects of it which are eerily reminiscent of Big Brother from, from 1984 in terms of control and surveillance. We all have to watch out. All right, let's talk then about the battle for the internet. Who then are the adversaries? Well, the adversaries, first of all, are criminals who are using the internet uh, in order to damage your bank balance, to damage your credit cards. So but for pecuniary gain, that's for, it. For, for pecuniary gain. Then you have uh, people who are using it to develop terrorist networks. And then you have states who are interested in controlling the internet as much as possible, uh, either for strategic gain against other states, so you'll have a lot of spying that's going on, or as an instrument of, of warfare, and there's a big dispute about whether the United States and Israel, when they placed a virus in a uranium enrichment facility in Iran, whether that was possibly could be interpreted as an act of war or not, also for control of their own citizens. So some countries like China, like Iran, like Russia, have very advanced surveillance and control mechanisms uh, with their internet so they can see who is doing what, who is saying what, and whether it's in that state's interest. I, I want to talk about the journalism re regarding this particular yeah. issue, but throughout this uh, two-day conference that I've attended, China and Russia come up a lot. They do. And in fact, on the, the uh, first day of the conference, the big headline in the New York Times was the Pentagon's latest report naming China for the first time specifically as the major espionage threat using cyber to the United States. Now, of course, the US and things like the Pentagon are interested in pumping this up to a degree because they can get then more money from the federal government for for their cyber defenses. Um, we also have to remember that the US is, you know, no naive um, sort of ingenue in this. They are the most powerful digital nation in the world. They own the data of Google, they own the data of Facebook and Twitter, and they have the most advanced offensive cyber capability uh, in the world. And so, there is a battle, there's a spin battle going on about cyber as well, trying to 
paint the Russians and the Chinese as a sort of new form of evil, evil empire. And the Chinese and the Russians, to be fair, do the same thing with the United States. Right. Uh, Misha Glenny, you're a frontline journalist. Uh, how difficult a story is this to investigate? Well, before I wrote Dark Market, I wrote a book called McMafia about global criminal networks around the world, including in South Africa, which was a fascinating book to research. And I thought the way to do this as authentically as possible is to talk to as many people involved in organized crime as I could. And actually, although it took a lot, many months of preparation each time, it was easier to do than I had mm. imagined. So I spoke to the boss of uh, a Yakuza group in Japan. I spoke to uh, a major narcotics dealer here in South Africa. I spoke to cyber criminals in Brazil and so on and so forth. When it came to doing cyber crime, it's slightly different because the cyber criminals are not like traditional organized crime people. They do not need violence. Mm -hmm. They don't deploy violence. They don't go around with baseball bats or sticking guns to people's heads. But they love the mystique mm -hmm. of the internet and of the mystery of their own virtual personality. So it would take a lot of time tracking them down, asking them whether they would talk. And I, the, uh, the only interviews that I use in this book are people who I've actually met mm. face to face. But I assume once they start talking, they're really happy to talk. It's actually what's really interesting is, is it's, you know, they're very nervous for a long time and then suddenly it all gushes out, you know, and they, they talk and talk and talk and they are, as I say, they're different from ordinary criminals. They're often very young, they're often very smart. They often have difficulty communicating in the real world and are much happier communicating over the internet. So, you know, I would say about 30 to 40 percent of the people I interviewed displayed uh, yeah. symptoms of Asperger's syndrome and, and similar <laughs> spectrum disorders. But they have, they're very smart and interesting. Just a just final question to you then. Um, how difficult a story is it to tell given its technical nature? Really difficult because for the overwhelming bulk of, of uh, humanity, computers are endlessly boring. You know, no one wants to know. We just, we love them because they make our lives convenient. And if they go wrong, we get furious and we ring someone up and say, fix this bloody thing. Um, but uh, unfortunately, we have to get to know about security because it really impacts on our lives. So the thing to do is to tell the stories of the people involved, the hackers, the criminals, the cops. They all have very dramatic, interesting stories. So if you want to get across stuff about criminality or the dark side of the web, don't talk about computers, talk about people and tell a good story. And that's what I tried to do in this. Finally this week, the airline Mango and the Johannesburg-based SA Mzanzi Ballet collaborating to perform a world first at the recent SA Air Force Museum air show at Swatkorps in Pretoria. A new generation Boeing 737-800 and the dancers turning the airfield into the largest audience for a ballet performance ever seen on the African continent. Well, that's taking the brand to new heights, uh, literally. You certainly can't fault the thinking here, but uh, I'm not entirely sure if uh, Blue Bulls supporters uh, in and around Swatkorps would have appreciated the uh, brand association. That's this week's show. As always, thank you for watching. news that moves enca.com